Hey everyone, welcome back to Playcrastination Population 300. Today I'm here with a, what I hope is going to be a pretty quick channel update video um, just to answer a couple questions and kind of let you guys know um, what's going to be going on on the channels over the course of the next few weeks. So um, as you guys can see, I am home. Um, we've done a little bit more with my room down here, which is exciting. This is once I graduate in, uh, let's say today's March 14th. So as soon as I graduate in literally two months from today, Two months from today, my lease ends and I will move home, which is the most excited I've ever been in my entire life. Um, I'll never have to go to college again. Well, you know, unless I change my major. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but for the most part, I'm going to be coming back here. And this will be my recording studio, if you will, um, for that time being until uh, either I just land a crazy awesome job and can pay for a nice apartment complex and move out or until I just, you know, can't take it here anymore and I move out, which... Um, I don't really know yet. Plan plan wise, things are kind of up in the air. Um, I do have a job offer um, once I come out of college that I'm considering taking, and so you know, uh, if I get that, I'd like to move a little bit closer to uh, where that job is. So uh, it could be out, you know, by the end of summer. Um, it could be something that takes a little bit longer before. It honestly depends on on money and uh, what makes the most sense financially. Um, so I'll have to be thinking about that over the course of the next couple months. But anyway, that's not the point of this video. I don't know why I'm going to rant. I'm home. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Um, and while I'm home, um, I've been dealing with some stuff and uh, I'm taking care of, of some things um, here at home. And so um, there's a couple things on the channel that I wanted to, to address. First and foremost, um, I had a couple questions. Um, people were asking about why I've hidden my subscriber count, which is a good question. It's a viable question. Um, basically the, the thought that went behind it, I watched this video, um, from a YouTuber whose name I can't remember at this current moment and I'm very sorry. Um, yeah, I can't remember at all. It was on the trending page, so I watched it. Um, but it was basically a video titled why you should hide your subscriber count. Um, and basically what this guy did was he did kind of, um, a field test and experiment, if you will, uh, when he was a smaller channel of a month's period of time, um, putting out daily content, one video a day of about the same quality um, for one month with his with his um, subscribers being shown. And then the next month, he did it again with his subscribers not being shown. And what he found was that when he didn't show people his subscribers, they were more likely to subscribe, which is weird. Um, I, I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense. The, the basic premise is that um, when people see a channel like mine that has 300 subscribers... You kind of already have you, you already have one foot in the grave, if you will. When people see that you only have 300 subscribers, it's automatically assumed. First of all, it's unlikely they're even going to click on your videos because they go, "Why would I click on the videos of a dude with 300 subscribers when I can watch Isaac content from someone with 100,000?" Um, it makes sense. So, a, you're already less likely to even get their click in the first place. B, they're less likely to subscribe because not that people. I like to believe that people are are awesome and and you know objective. And not subjective, but let's be honest, if you um, see a dude with 300 subscribers, you got to be like, you know, you're, you're pretty much going into the content with the thought that if this dude's only got a couple hundred subscribers, it's probably not very good. Um, and so basically this guy's suggestion was you should turn off your subscriber count so people um, not knowing how many subscribers you have will have to assume. And and that's the, that's the thing is I've gotten comments before now. A lot of these people I think don't really know what they're talking about, but um, I'm flattered when I get these comments. Nonetheless, I'll get comments that say, um, you know, I watched your Isaac series. I've been watching your Isaac series for a couple months and I never noticed your subscriber count. I thought you would be at, you know, several hundred thousand with the way that you carry yourself and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, who, who knows if these are actually real people that even comment these things or if they're just like, you know, check out my channel. Also, you're so good. Um, hard to say. Um, but, uh, one difficulty with our channel in doing that is that my intro, which has kind of been fundamental to, uh, everything that, it's the start of every video. I announce the, the number of citizens in Playcrastination, aka our subscriber count. So even when these people, now maybe people that are, like aren't part of this channel wouldn't know what that even means. They come in and be like, oh, population 300, what's that mean? Oh, you from Sweden. Well, that's a little bit bigger than that, but... I kind of give it away right at the beginning. So that's kind of dumb on my part. Uh, so that's something I need to figure out um, if I want to leave my subscriber count off. And also people are just going to watch this video and be like, oh my God, he has 300 subscribers. Mm, cheater. Uh, that's something I have to think about if I want to leave subscriber count off. I, I don't I don't like it. It's not that I'm trying to be like non-transparent. I want to be as transparent as possible. Um, but at the same time, I want to have a fair shake against people that... Um, 
that are looking at my channel. Uh, at least until I get you know a couple more subscribers. Don't I don't want you to think like some people I know what they'll do is they'll like turn off their subscriber count and then. You know, they'll do like, I don't know, there's like paying services or like stuff like that where basically you like buy subscribers uh, and people will do that and then they'll turn it back on. They'll be like, wow, we jumped 6,000 subscribers in a week. How, how, how do? And uh, that's not what's happening. So that's why I, I kind of want to still announce the, the population at the beginning. And I just don't know if I'm going to turn it back on or when. Um, honestly, I'll take your guys' suggestions on that if you'd. Um, I, I feel like if you're here already, the amount of subscribers doesn't really matter for you. I'm hoping that you're here um, because you enjoy the content and because I'm putting out content that um, actually entertains you in some way, shape, and or form. Um, but yeah, so that's answering the first question considering or concerning subscriber count, why that's not up. The second um, issue, which is the more pressing one, my hands look so tiny. They look tiny? Like a hand shrink on. Um, the... The piece of news that is a bit more pressing, a bit more concerning um, for you guys that I'm going to tell you about, um, how do I preface this? I came home for break, and the first thing we did, we were cleaning up my old room to put my new stuff down here, and we were going through the mo some old stuff, and I found this. Classic Game Boy Color. Oh my god, you can almost see the reflection of the webcam. Where is it? Where's the webcam? There it is. Classic Game Boy Color with... Pokemon Crystal still inside of it. Had to change out the batteries because they were messed up, but listen. It didn't make the sound. Oh no. Hold on. If you guys have never seen this done before, you're witnessing a pro. Did you hear that? It works. It's hard to see. Because literally the... I forgot how dark these games were. But literally, it's so dark and impossible to see. You cannot play this past 5 p.m. But it works. And uh, I've been playing the crap out of that over the last couple of days. Um, just kind of, I don't know. Like I said, I've had some stuff going on um, with some, uh, we'll just call them jerks. <laughs> I don't want to get too far into it. So, because um, I don't really like stirring crap up and I don't want to bring that to the channel but uh, I've been dealing with some people and I've been a little bummed ever since I've had to deal with those situations and so I needed something to kind of pick me up a bit and classic Pokemon is there any better way to, to cheer yourself up a little bit so I've been playing that and having a really good time um, and doing so really want me to, to um, bring Pokemon back to the channel in some way um, and, and I know back in, I guess it was like late January when we finally finished our Pokemon Sun Let's Play, I said I was really burnt out on Pokemon, and at that time I really was, um, but in a, you know, the month and a half, two months that we've had off from it, um, I gotta admit there's a little bit of an itch there to go back and play it. Um, and so, after we finished our Volt White series, um, I had this idea for um, a Nuzlocke variation that would make things, hopefully, I mean, obviously the Volt White challenge was hard enough, we lost. Um, but I had an idea for a different Nuzlocke variant that doesn't currently exist, uh, that I thought was really unique and would be really fun, that um, doesn't currently exist out there. there. There's one similar to it that I've found, but none that exactly use this mechanic. There, there might be that I just couldn't find. But I looked through, for literally hours, through all the different kinds of Nuzlocke's to find if there was one that matched this perfectly, and I couldn't really find one. Um, and so I'm not going to say, like, I created the greatest Nuzlocke ever. But however, I think it has a mechanic in it that I hope works that I think will make it ridiculously um, high stakes. Let, let's put it that way. I don't want to say too much. Um, but basically, I'm currently playtesting um, my variation uh, with the rules. And I'm currently seeing that the early game is way too hard right now with the rules that I've imposed. So I'm trying to find like little solutions for myself to, um, to kind of make it a bit bigger. But I guess the big news you should take from this is that this new Pokemon Nuzlocke series is going to be coming to the channel very soon. Um, I'm playtesting it right now. I am trying to fi fine-tune the rules so that it's um, a perfect balance of, of, of difficulty but not impossible, if that makes sense. Because right now what I've tried is I can't even get to the first gym because I've made things too hard and my party gets dwindled very quickly. Um, now, unfortunately, um, as this series comes in, another series has to go. Um, and so I'm very sorry, Joji, if you're watching this. Um, but that series is going to be Borderlands 2. Um, 
it's not that I do not love Borderlands 2. It's, it's, it's the weirdest thing. I really don't get it with Borderlands 2 because I love the game itself. I've been playing it. I love, like, while I'm recording it, I love that I'm playing it. But then after I'm done recording it, I'm not proud of the recordings that I made, if that makes sense. Um, it's so weird. It's like the, the commentary in Borderlands 2, um, especially compared to the two other series we have right now, Banjo-Tooie and, and, and Binding of Isaac, is just, it's just weird. I, I don't really know what it is. I think part of it is the unfamiliarity with the game. Um, you know, a game like Banjo-Tooie I've played before, uh, and a game like Isaac is so natural to me, it's kind of like I'm playing it in the background and I'm mostly focusing on the commentary. So games like that, the commentary kind of just flows out. It's a lot sillier. There's a lot more laughing. Um, for some reason with Borderlands 2, it's not there. I don't know if it's that it's a first-person shooter or that it's a little bit more story-driven or that it, I, I don't know what it is about the game, um, but I... I the, the commentary on it for some reason, I just, I just personally think you guys might enjoy it and, and that's awesome, but I just don't think it's very good. Um, and that m probably is a bigger issue with me. If it is in fact the unfamiliarity with the game, then that's an issue on me because I cannot possibly grow this channel, um, to the size that I want it to by only playing, um, excuse me, by only playing games from my childhood. It's just not possible. There's not enough audience there. Most people, and there's also not enough draw there. Most people come find new channels because you start playing a brand new game that just dropped, like Mass Effect Andromeda just dropped well, either today or sometime this week. I can't remember. If I were to pick that game up and start playing it, I'm not going to, but you know, maybe if I did. Um, if I were to pick that up and start playing it, we could probably get some new subs. Me saying, um, we're going to go back and play um, Super Mario 64. No one's really looking for content like that unless you're a speedrunner, which I'm not. Um, and so it's not a good growth strategy to only play games that I'm familiar with. So part of that is I just have to get better at commentary on games that I'm unfamiliar with. Um, because I'm so unfamiliar with Borderlands and the story, I'm so focused on that and like thinking through it. And I'm also just not very good at first person shooters. So I don't know how to comment. Basically commentary. Suck. Let me, ow, I'm saying a lot of things. What I'm trying to say is, um, Borderlands 2 is going to be leaving the channel for now, uh, but don't think it's going to be gone forever. Um, it is definitely a game that I could see lending itself better to a stream at some point. Um, if I ever do start getting more into Twitch or YouTube streaming, um, it's definitely a game that I think has, because I'm so bad at it and I can't, like, you guys give me all these suggestions on the videos and I can't, um, I can't. In, what's the word? Initiate them. I can't implement them. There we go. I can't implement them into my play until like several videos after. And at that point it's too late and then I've messed up and then it's just bad. I think it's a game that I'm so unfamiliar with it would lend itself much better to streaming um, because uh, you guys give me that on the fly advice. I also think it's a game that would probably lend itself better to a co-op um, mode. And, and I know my friend Joji really wanted to do a co-op with me. Um, and at the beginning I was like, oh, I'm going to play it by myself. But looking back, I wish I would have done, um, a co-op mode because I think it would have been a lot more. The commentary obviously would have been better because it's two people to rely on it. It's someone who actually has knowledge of the game. Um, and I think it would have been better. So it will come back at some point rather than the form of streaming, um, a co-op series or a co-op stream, maybe combine best of both worlds there. Um, but don't think Borderlands 2 is going to be gone for forever. And don't think I hate the game. I really did enjoy it. Um, it's just... I don't know if it's not my style or just the con some about the commentary never felt fresh. And it's like, I would record an episode of Borderlands 2 and then after I'd be like, that commentary wasn't very good. And then I would record, because sometimes you just have off commentary days. I'll have days where I record a couple Isaac episodes and in all three of them I'm like, those episodes weren't that good. But twice, like several times, I would play Borderlands, say that commentary was bad, then play Isaac and be like, wow, that commentary was so good. Or I would play Borderlands, like this happened yesterday. I played Borderlands, the one that went up yesterday, I was like, this commentary sucked. And then I played Banjo-Tooie right after, and it was maybe my favorite episode of Banjo-Tooie I've ever recorded. Um, and so I don't know what the heck the deal is there. Um, why I can't keep it the charm, or whatever it is, the, 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 the silliness turned on for both. Um, that's something I'm going to have to figure out. But, so, long story short, subscriber count... It's off for now. I might leave it off. I might change my intro so that you can't hear the number of subscribers I have because I want people to judge me fairly. B, second thing, um, Borderlands 2 is going to be leaving the channel. A new Nuzlocke variant um, of Pokemon. I don't even want to say the game yet because, you know, leave some surprises basically. Uh, but a new Nuzlocke variant is going to be coming to the channel. 
I'm trying to get script. Like, I'm trying to get like my videos are not scripted. I'm trying to get like a schedule. That's the word I'm looking for. I'm trying to get a schedule of events. Trying to figure out what's probably going to happen is I'm going to be play testing it. It's it's Tuesday right now, and I'm on I'm on break, which is nice. So I have time to do this. Um, although I have been like recording my videos the day of and uploading them the day of, so like maybe I don't have as much time as I thought. Um, but probably the rest of this week, I'll be testing this Nuzlocke idea. I've already got the layout. I've been making it for the last couple of days. I've been up to like four making it. I think it looks pretty good. It's a little bit simpler than some other layouts I've made in the past. Pretty much just webcam, top screen, bottom screen party. No question of the day or any fancy stuff like that because it's, I don't know, I just don't think it's me. Um... But layout's ready to go. I'm pretty much just testing out these rules to see what's the best. Do I want to randomize? Do I not want to randomize? Which is, makes it easier? Which makes it harder? Um, Non-randomize would definitely be easier. I'll think about it. But anyway, this is why I play test. Um, I'm going to hope to have it play tested, rules established, ready, done. And then I'll record episode one sometime later this week. That'll be our choose your starter episode. Um, and then I will probably drop that episode starting next Monday. And then let the poll run from Monday to Friday. And then whatever, you know, whoever our starter's chosen to be, ended on Friday. And then, of course, our series will um, then commence the next Monday. I'll have the weekend to record a couple episodes, get a kind of a decent little um, buffer zone recorded up just in case some more stuff happens. Um, and have it ready to go. But that, that's the hope. Fingers crossed. No, no guarantees, obviously. Um... But yeah, so choose your starter episode, hopefully next Monday, uh, and then a week from then, episode two, the actual start of the Nuzlocke will drop. Um, yeah, sounds about right to me. I think you guys will really enjoy it. Uh, the, I've pitched the concept to a couple friends just to like let them know what it's about, and they are like, I will watch the heck out of that, and so um, that has me excited. Now, most most of my subscribers are friends anyway, so like... That helps um, that I'm, you know, I'm basically like catering to them and they're going to, they're going to enjoy it. But I'm hoping if you guys like it, you'll share with some people as well that maybe also like Pokemon content. And if you're, if you're one of my Isaac viewers that, you know, maybe you're like, eh, Pokemon's not for me, give this one a watch. I think you might dig it because what I'm trying to do with this variation that's going to make it more difficult is bring a lot more strategy um, to the actual game itself. Because for me, one of the biggest drawbacks of a Nuzlocke is yes, it's hard. But, like, you can play so safe if you wanted to and make it really boring and win. That's what I did on my first Nuzlocke. I would heal after every battle. Um, or you could, like, play stupid and take risks, but then you're kind of asking for... You're, you're, like, asking for bad things to happen. So I wanted to create a Nuzlocke variant where there was this happy medium of you have to play strategically in order to be safe, but you're also, like, you're literally going to be forced to take risk because you can't do the, I don't want, I can't describe it really. You'll see in episode one what the heck I'm talking about. But anyway, I've been talking for a lot longer than I want to. It's like almost 20 minutes and this was going to be a short update. So subscriber count, new series, bye bye Borderlands. I apologize. I got a new shirt. It freaking matches my pretty much every other shirt I have of this variety. So that's cool. Um, but you know what? This one's a large, so it fits my ever growing belly a little bit better. Um, anything else? Anything else? Anything else? Oh, uh, a huge shout out to, uh, Will, Winter Bear, and Yeti Hype. It sounded like three people. Will is Winter Bear. Shout out to Winter Bear and Yeti Hype. Um, they came in clutch for me, um, by gifting me, uh, a pre-order for one of the games that I'm most excited about for this year. Um, and it's the game that is likely going to be replacing Banjo-Tooie once we finally finish that series, and that's Ukulele. Um, it's the... Puzzle platform by the comp by by the people that worked at Rare before they were kicked off the squad because it got bought by Microsoft. Blah blah blah. And basically, they went to go make a Banjo and Kazooie three, um, but they obviously didn't have the rights to the name Banjo Kazooie, so they made Ukulele instead. And from what I've seen from like demo videos and what I've seen from um, which I think I might actually make a video on this. It's a, it's a little like um, it's called the Ukulele Toy Box. It's kind of just like a tutorial level of what the game's gonna feel like. It feels like Banjo Kazooie. The music feels like Banjo Kazooie. The playing feels like Banjo Kazooie. Other than the freaking giant tomato nose on the bat, it looks like Banjo Kazooie, and I'm, I'm very excited for this game. So huge shout out to them. Thank you guys. I'll leave their links in the description below so you can go give them some love for um, providing us with what I think could be 
Um, one of the most fun series I've ever done on the entire channel. But it's going to be a nice mixture of nostalgia and new game, which maybe that's what I need. Uh, maybe those are the new games I need to, to play or the ones that I can do that with. But anyway, um, Isaac's going to continue. Banjo 2 is going to continue. Um, Isaac, we're doing Eden streaking right now. If you're not into that, let me know and maybe we can hook up something else. I'm also doing the mods showcase, uh, the Let's Demo series, I should say, every uh, Tuesday, Thursday, twice a week. Um, if you guys want to see more or less of those, also let me know. Again, a lot of this is kind of just like things are kind of up in the air right now. Things are weird, uh, and I'm trying to just get a hold on things and trying to figure them out. So um, anyway, thank you guys so much for listening to my rambling. If you did enjoy this video and if you're excited for this upcoming stuff, that is going to happen. Make sure you subscribe to become a citizen of Playcrastination today. And if you know anybody that you think would be a great Playcrastinator, go ahead and send them on by because we'd love to have them. But with that, thank you all so much for watching. I love you guys so much, and I will see you guys next time.